It's Full Metal Jackie, Dave Mustaine of Megadeth, again, here at the Dean Guitars booth at uh, NAM 2015. And we're talking about Megadeth, and, you know, as you said, you've rebuilt Megadeth uh, a few different, uh, you know, with different members a few different times over the history of the band. Is it, like, an exciting opportunity to have new people add their unique talent to the Megadeth brand, or is it more, you know, disruptive than anything else? Well, it depends if they really have talent and, and they come in, uh, or if they're a utility player. You know, we've had a couple situations over the past when, the rest in peace lineup broke up. Jimmy DeGrasso came in. You know, Jimmy was a great player. We never really congealed, though. Same with Al Petrelli. I, I love both those guys as people, and and I have so much respect for them as players. But for some reason, we never really could get that that equilibrium between all of us. You know, and when you're playing in a band together, that's as close as you'll ever get to 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 another person without having sex with them. I mean, it's real. You can't get any closer to a band member. And, you know, after that, James Lomenzo, James McDonough, Glenn Drover, Sean Drover, Chris Broderick, all those guys, the fans don't want those guys in Megadeth. I'm going in the studio March 2nd no matter what. And the songs that we have right now, we talked to the label, I said, I'm not making another radio song ever. Because that's what, you know, record companies want. And I think that was the bane of Megadeth's existence. When Countdown came out, we had so many radio songs. From Countdown to Euthanasia to Cryptic to Risk and going down and down and down, it was more radio, radio, radio. You know, I love all those songs, but it's not really what Megadeth fans want to hear. They want to hear stuff like The Conjuring, like Set the World to Fire, like Devil's Island, stuff like Holy War, stuff like Take No Prisoners. And, and I get it. I wrote those songs. I can do that in my sleep. But when you're having someone else say, this is what you have to do, you know, either you listen or you don't. Yeah, I mean, and that's obviously been, I think, the uh, trouble a lot of times with bands and, you know, obviously with labels, they want you to make a radio song. But the thing is, is you have a built-in audience that you've had with you for such a long time, mm -hmm. and they're going to show up. And I don't think right. that, like, you necessarily have to have a, radio, a song on the radio for people to be aware of, you know, your band. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really good that you're just going to do what you, what you love and what your fans are expecting of you, and I'm sure that's exciting for you. Well, the most exciting part right now is that I've been really, I've, I've, I've been cataloging songs my whole career. And I had stuff from micro cassettes to cassette tapes. I mean, I didn't have any eight tracks. <laughs> <laughs> but I had everything possible that you could put any kind of medium of music on, including handwritten tablature. It took me three years to archive all this stuff. You know, you mentioned before whether or not it's going to be a Megadeth record or a Dave Mustaine record. I mean, in a lot of ways, Megadeth is uh, singularly synonymous with Dave Mustaine. What are the advantages and disadvantage to that perception? Well, in Megadeth, I think that my heart feels it's unfair to discredit the other guys that I'm playing with because, you know, it, it is really a team effort, although, you know, I carry a lot of the, the weight. It's like a quarterback. I touch the ball on every play. Like a pitcher, I touch the ball on every play. Um, but I, I do recognize that people know I'm the leader. Now, some leaders can... You know, they're, they're like in the animal kingdom, the heads in the front and the assholes in the back. <laughs> but I, I think we're more like a living organism, not so much as an amoeba, but, you know, we all, we all work together. You know, it, it's like a car has four tires. And the reason that guys have been asked to leave or quit was because they decided they were going to turn one direction and the other three wheels are going in a different direction, you know. And talking about new music, uh, Dave Ellison uh, stated that there's going to be a new, new Megadeth album or, you know, a new album of sorts later on this year. Creatively, what inspire, like, is inspiring you right now and how has it affected what you're doing or going to do for this record? Well, I think because there's so much music that, I mean, there's music that I have saved from back around P. Cell's era, So Far So Good era, stuff that, that I listen to it and I'm thinking, how the fuck did I play that? You know, so I have to put it into a machine and, and listen and slow it down and scoop out all the noise in the background so I can hear what I was doing because it's mind-blowing riffing. That is what is exciting for me right now. And, and when David Ellison did the last record on Super Collider, the bass playing was really... He had said that he, he really had a lot, of, a lot of playing and stuff like that. And a lot of people don't like that record because there's so many radio-type songs on it. And I think a lot of that has to do with the producer that you're working with. Well, uh, I want to speak on behalf of uh, Megadeth fans everywhere. We're all looking forward to what's to come. New Megadeth record or a new Dave Mustaine record, whatever it's going to be, really looking forward to it. So thank you so much for taking the time You're with welcome. Dean TV. Always for you.